The UFC is back after a little gap week with the fight night headlined by Sean Brady versus Gilbert Burns. It's going to be a decent card. It's not crazy, crazy name value on it, but there are definitely some great matchups. So how do I see each and every fight going? I'm glad you asked. We'll start with the main event and work our way down. Before we get into it, though, if you are interested and haven't joined the Topology group yet, there is a Fantasy MMA Picks group on this channel on the Topology website. All you need to do is sign up through their site and you can join and then you can compete for points within the group as well as all sorts of awards on the site. So it's a fun way to make fight nights like this a little bit more enjoyable. You can find the link to the group in the description of this video and that will get you to the right place to make an account if you don't have one yet. I'm taking Sean Brady, Natalia Silva, Steve Garcia, Alessandro Costo, Yanala Schmooz, and Chris Padilla on the main card. Prelims, I'm going to take Ovin St. Pru, Isaac Dolgarian, Felipe Dos Sanos, Gabriel Santos, Vanessa Demopoulos, and Andre Petroski. So let's dive into the breakdown now. Let's start with the main event. We'll talk about Gilbert Burns versus Sean Brady. I do not see Gilbert Burns beating Sean Brady. A lot of people do like to crap on Sean Brady because he got beat by Bilal Muhammad, who's a bully and bullied him and broke him. And it was like an early-ish stoppage. And Sean Brady did say like, yeah, he should have been doing more. But he was like shelling up against the cage. And Bilal Muhammad has demonstrated he has a really, really active, frustrating lead hand. And, you know, pop, pop, pop in the nose and mush a whole bunch of times can get a guy who's not used to that, he's used to having his way in a fight, can kind of confuse him. So I don't think that loss is the worst for Sean Brady. It's not the greatest the way it went, obviously, but it's a massive learning experience and it's aged phenomenally now that Bilal Muhammad is champion and after we've seen him bully Leon Edwards the way he did and, you know, he's a beat Gilbert Burns. Uh, Gilbert Burns, he broke Gilbert Burns' arm with that slam. I remember picking Bilal in that fight, people crapping on me. Why would you pick Bilal? Gilbert Burns is going to run through him. Nah, he's going to get bullied. And I think Sean Brady is going to bully Gilbert. Uh, Gilbert's good, like, grappler, but he does struggle with dominant wrestlers. And he's older now, and he's got those niggles, those nagging injuries, right? I think Sean Brady is going to be able to have his way with him because I don't think it's going to settle into some striking match where Gilbert's still having a lot of success. Look at what he did against Jack Della Maddalena, and even before that, a while before that, I guess, against Hamza. He's actually very competent on the feet at this point. Um, I just don't think it's going to play out there. I think Sean Brady is going to be able to have his way, dominate Gilbert Burns impose his will on him and just grapple great bump to a five-round decision. All right, we've got Jessica Andrade versus Natalia Silva. This is a dangerous matchup for Natalia Silva, but I trust Natalia Silva to get it done because she's shown to me she has a great distance management game, maybe a little bit uh, overly like, she'll stay out of range a little bit, and then it kind of affects the impact of her strike. She's like, a li she needs to figure out that range a little bit, but if she's young, she's a she's getting into it. Jessica Andrade is extremely dangerous, though. Like, she is, like, this gritty little chaparita, basically, right? And uh, it's a tough one. I'm going to take Natalia Silva, because even if it's close, Bunda is the number one scoring criteria. Pretty girls are the number one scoring criteria in MMA, it seems like, at this moment. And, uh... Natalia Silva is has a lot of a star appeal in that regard, so I think she's going to take a decision over Jessica Andrade, regardless if it's close or dominant, as long as she can stay safe and survive that, not get uh, finished in any way by old Chaparita Jessica. So let's get to the featured fight now. This is Steve Garcia versus Kyle Nelson. I hate this for Kyle Nelson because Kyle Nelson had that matchup with Cater, Kelvin Cater, who pulled out, and that piece of crap... Because that was a tailor-made matchup for Kyle Nelson to work him, bro. I think Kyle Nelson would have beat Cater. And um, I think he's going to lose the Steve Garcia. 
Sorry, I think secrecy is surging right now. I think he's on an absolute tear. He is just seemingly able to find these finishes against opponents, no matter how gritty and tough they are. And I think he's going to find that finish over Kelvin. Sorry, not over Kelvin, over Nelson in the second round. And it's just an unfortunate matchup because I like to seek. I like Nelson. He's a good Canadian prospect in that regard. He's not one of these bombs like Mike Mallet. He's got a lot of heart. And uh, it's going to be a good fight, and, you know, I'd be happy to be wrong. But I also like Steve Garcia a lot. I think these guys are both good additions to 145, and I don't like them having to see them fight each other right as they're both cracking into the rankings. Steve Garcia, though, clearly the UFC is very high on because they've placed him at 9. He's like ninth ranked in the UFC right now. I'm going to take Steve Garcia finding that second round KO. I hope we get an absolute scrap banging war out of this and made the best man win at the end of the day. I'd be happy to be wrong. All right, we have Alessandro Costa versus Matt Schnell. Easy, one and done, round one KO for Costa. Schnell don't got it, brah. And he is one of the most based fight styles in the UFC, though, because he's basically a Jamie Malarkey type. He's not that technically good. He has no chin, and he'll brawl with absolute like power punchers, counter strikers, guys who are way better in the pocket than him consistently. He fights like he doesn't get dropped by friggin' the slightest punches and his chin's completely cracked and all this stuff. I love Matt Schnell's energy and I hope they keep him around forever because he puts on great uh, fun fights. But I just think Alessandro Costa's, uh, it's his time. He's going to put out Schnell. And does that really tell us that much anymore besides that, hey, you are able to knock out Schnell? I don't really know. So it's a decent, fun fight for what it is on the card. But as you can see, this isn't like the greatest card in terms of like, Pretty much everything after the Steve Garcia, Kyle Nelson fight. There's three fights on this card that actually have like real bearing in rankings and who's going to maybe can make a run out of, you know, like Natalia still by Steve Garcia, Kyle Nelson, and then obviously Sean Brady. But like Trevor Peak for Sian Alish Moves is the next fight we're going to talk about here. And holy crap, both. Hey, I love Peak. I love his style. I love his energy. He's like a former meth head or something, right? I, I like the guy. I think he's an entertaining personality. But he has demonstrated a real low fight IQ, lack of real skill. Just a whole bunch of like poor issues like he's got a lot of issues in his game a lot of holes and Yanalash moves on the other hand well he is not the greatest necessarily he's only has that one loss where he pretty well broke his arm and then got didn't even get finished so demonstrated absolute grit, heart, and a lot of durability there. So he's absolutely going to be able to last three rounds at the peak. And I think he's going to win this fight. This is a pick em fight right now while I'm recording this. And I think Yanel Schmooz is the smarter, safer pick on this. He's demonstrated a better game. He's demonstrated a lot of power. He's, I don't know, he's demonstrated a lot of durability. Whereas Peak has demonstrated more so holes in his games to in his game to me and uh, uh, kind of a lack of technique and fight IQ. So I'm going to roll with Yanalish moves on this one. All right, we have Rong Zhu versus Chris Padilla. Okay, Rong Zhu dog poo. Hey, Rong Zhu dog poo. Uh, he sucks. He's been in the UFC before, and uh, he got cut. And then now he's been back on this, like, road to UFC thing. He fights, like, this, like, cocky. I do no. Fading him entirely. Chris Padilla all day long. I'm taking Chris Padilla by submission. Rong Zhu been subbed in the UFC before. He's been subbed by higher level, comp a higher level competition, or at least level of competition around Chris Padilla. Chris Padilla has demonstrated a lot of submissions in his career and at that level. And, you know, he's subbing up uh, James Lomtop, who I consider like a very durable, uh, decent, like journeyman tier fighter and stuff, who's better than Rong Zhu at the end of the day. Rong Zhu, journey can, not journey man. He's going to work him. Fading the Chinese guy here. Uh, there's a reason they are putting these road to UFC guys on these like low tier spotlight highlights because if they were high on them, they'd be on UFC Noche just as like, you know, about. So taking Chris Padilla in this one by submission. All right, we have Ryan Spann versus Ovin St. Pru. I don't know why Ovin St. Pru is getting so disrespected in this fight, especially after working Kennedy and Zuchukwu, the much younger man in his last performance. Post USADA OSP and post Cannibal Riot in Haiti OSP, you can connect the dots, I'm not insinuating anything, has shown he is still got it at this age, and he can absolutely beat a freaking bomb 
like Ryan Spann. Ryan Spann doesn't take his career seriously. He has extraordinarily weak mental game mindset, total uh, dumb fight IQ moves. And while he's like very athletically impressive, doesn't matter after a certain point. That doesn't matter. I think Ovin, Ovin St. Pru is going to beat him by a decision. So, and I just embarrass Ryan Spann. He's honestly someone who, in my personal opinion, I don't know why the UFC is keeping him around. They've given him enough chances to prove how good he is. I guess it's the weight class, right? All right, so we have Isaac Dolgarian versus Brandon Marat. Brandon Marat lost his most recent outing to Christian Rodriguez. I believe it was a split decision. And Christian Rodriguez is decent, in my opinion, and he can definitely beat... Um, a decent caliber of featherweight as well as bantamweight competition. I know he's a weight bully down at bantamweight. And he got exposed by it was a Rosa, right? Um, by a big rangy featherweight. But So we kind of see C-Rod ceiling. Uh, Isaac Dugarian, I think probably maybe a bit of a better ceiling because he's a more dominant grappler there. And Brendan Moreau, on the other hand, lost his most recent outing. I think that's Terrence McKinney, if I'm, if I'm not mixing up. If he's not fought since then, he got like need like brutally by Terrence McKinney, obviously up at lightweight. This fight's going to be down at 145. Uh, I think Brendan Marat's chin is not like sus. Like anyone can get like dropped by knees from McKinney. McKinney's like crazy in the first round. Like he's a problem in the first round. And, uh, but I think Isaac Tulgarian, such a dominant grappler here. I think you should be able to get that ground and pound KO off on Marot probably later in the fight. I'm going to take it by a... Uh, uh, Second or third round, ground and pound KO for Dulgarian. And then we've got Felipe Dos Santos versus Andre Lima. Uh, I'm fading Lima. Split Going to split decision with that Raposo kid. Raposo showed a lot of heart and stuff, but like, come on. I'm taking Dos Santos, bro. A little shooter box, mini uh, flyweight, Charles Del Bronx. I think he's going to work him, dude. I think he's going to work Andre Lima. These shooter box guys have great like defensive grappling and stuff they're really good they're really familiar with guys like Andrew Lima's game and they've got that uh, nice striking hard striking right in your face style I think Felipe Dos Santos gonna walk Andre Lima down crack him up you know uh taking him all day long in that one by decision they've got Gabriel Santos versus this Jai other road to the UFC uh Asian Guy making his debut. Both these guys, you know, they have a lot of fights, but I don't think you can really uh, take them. I, I'm not taking any of the Chinese guys on the card tonight. I'm taking Gabriel Santos, who is 0-2 two, oh two in the UFC. So this is kind of a make-or-break fight for Gabriel Santos, but I do think he's going to perform and put on. And I think based on the level of competition they're giving this Jai guy, they're not extraordinarily confident, especially with his placement on the prelims too, that he's going to be any sort of stock, a star, sorry. And uh, yeah, whatever. I'm taking Gabriel Santos by decision in this one. All right, we have Jacqueline Amarim versus Vanessa Demopoulos. This is the second WMMA fight on the card, one of two WMMA fights. I'm taking Vanessa Demopoulos. A lot of people very high on Amarin, but it's like Amarin is demonstrated that she's not the greatest, and I think a dog like Vanessa Demopoulos can really just grind her out. Plus, she, the, the judges love Vanessa Demopoulos. It's like stupid to pick against her right now until she's fighting like actual, like real high top tier competition that like the UFC would obviously rather win than her. But like, I don't know, they kind of like her. She always like her clips always go good on like Twitter and Instagram and stuff like that, right? Like her jumping into the interviewer's arms or just her celebrating. She's got like that bubbly stripper personality. So I think she's probably out there shaking that fang on some of the judges, the way these fights have been going, but I'm not picking against Vanessa in this one. Uh, with WMMA, you can just sometimes pick that way, guys. Come on. Vanessa Demopoulos all day long. Don't overthink it. Andre Petrovsky versus Dylan Budka is our card opener. And uh, I think Andre Petrovsky's definitely got what it takes to beat Dylan Budka. If there's someone worse in the UFC than Andre Petrovsky, man, it's Dylan Budka. Guy, didn't know you, guy doesn't know you can throw strikes in MMA. I know he's still young. He's got plenty of time to improve. He's durable. He's a good wrestler at the end of the day. Uh, decent gas tank. But I think Andre Petrovsky's just got what it takes to beat him. He's going to 100% outpoint him. Uh, I think his fight probably go to decision, most likely. Butka is young, durable, and uh, he's going to be just like in on there, hanging in on failed takedowns, right? And like 
whatever. So Andre Petrovsky, all day long decision. If you guys enjoyed the picks video, drop a like on it. I'll be live for the fights this weekend. Whenever the prelims start, which I believe is 4 p.m. Eastern time. So I'll be live right then. We'll be live for the petrovsky Budkit fight all the way to Brady versus Burns. Hop into my live stream if you want a fight companion watch party. And uh, once again, drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new and turn the bell notification on so you don't miss a single thing. I'd like to give a big thank you to all my channel members and a special thanks to my Lion Tier members. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. And without all of you, the channel would not be possible. Dime, Bobby. Dime, mommy.